A Place Called Home by Lori Wick, Chapter 33 Since it was too soon for Sue and the baby to be out, Sunday dinner was at their home. Sue stayed up in bed, allowing one visitor at a time, but Elizabeth was brought downstairs and she made the rounds. The table space at Mark and Sue's did not allow all the adults to eat in the living room. Sorry. The table space at Mark and Sue's did not allow all the adults to eat in the dining room. Christine cheerfully agreed to eat in the kitchen with the children. Luke scowled in Christine's direction as she headed for the kitchen. He was unaware that her reason for going to the kitchen was because she genuinely loved spending time with the children, and not because of Caroline's remark the week before. He thought about going after her, but decided against it. Christine saw the frown and wondered at it. It stayed with her even as she enjoyed a wonderful time with the kids. The three children tried to outdo one another on memory verses. Christine was amazed at all they knew. Finally, she asked, Why do you memorize Bible verses? Calvin answered, It helps you not to sin. There's even a verse about it. All the children thought for a while, but couldn't remember it. Luke, standing unobserved at the doorway, came in and whispered in Emily's ear. She beamed at them and said, I will hide God's word in my heart. She hesitated, and Luke bent over to her ear again. Emily nodded and started over. I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Luke kissed her cheek before pulling up a chair at the table. Suddenly, Christine lost her appetite, so conscious was she of Luke's presence right across the table. She listened to him and the children, but only sipped her milk and pushed her food around for something to do with her hands. Aren't you going to eat? You can't have dessert unless your plate is clean. Don't you like chicken? Emily's innocent questions set Christine's cheeks ablaze. She looked over at the little girl next to her and then back at her plate, knowing that the table was quiet, awaiting her answer. Christine wished with all her heart at this second that the floor would open up so she could fall through. Have you always embarrassed so easily? Christine's head snapped up at this casual question to find Luke regarding her thoughtfully, his elbow on the table and his chin propped up in his hand. Christine's blush only deepened as he studied her face. Uncle Luke, you shouldn't tease Christine. Calvin, who knew his uncle well enough to have caught the teasing tone in his voice, admonished him in a grown-up way. You're right, Cal, Luke answered, all teasing gone and without taking his eyes from Christine's face. But Christine is beautiful when she blushes. It's nearly impossible to resist. Luke smiled at her then. Perfect white teeth stood out against his tanned features. He continued to smile and regard her with such warm amusement that Christine couldn't stay at the table. Luke, who half expected her to give as good as she got, felt badly when, too flustered to speak, Christine fled the table and began to prepare water for the dishes. Luke sat a bit longer with the children. He noted how Christine was careful to keep her back to the room. Her every movement spoke of tenseness, and he knew that saying anything, even in kindness, would only make matters worse. So, taking pity on her, he left the kitchen. How long have you been a nurse, Maggie? Ah, now that would be telling. You might even be able to guess my age. As usual, Maggie was businesslike. Christine laughed and said, It must have been wonderful to see Elizabeth come into the world. You're right about that. In all my years of nursing, it's a sight I never grow tired of. Are you the only person in your family in medicine? No, no, my father was a doctor and my oldest brother was a pra has a practice. His daughter, my niece, is in nurse's training right now. So you can see that my decision to become a nurse was an easy one. Well, for purely selfish reasons, I'm glad you are, Christine told her. Maggie laughed. Let's get this coffee to the front room. <clears throat> Christine carried a tray full of cups and saucers. Maggie's tray held the coffee, cream, and sugar. Christine's idea to help Maggie serve went out the window when, after she set her tray down, she noticed the occupants of the couch. Luke sat comfortably holding his baby niece, her downy blonde head moving, her eyes open and searching as Luke talked to her. Next to him, leaning over his arm to see the baby, was Caroline. The entire pose was so tender and family-like that Christine felt tears beginning to form. Mumbling an excuse to no one in particular about checking on the children, Christine turned for the back door. 
Once outside, Christine drew in great gulps of cold air, somehow hoping to freeze the ache in her chest. She could hear the children at the side of the house and took a quick peek to see if they had, a, had their sweaters on. Christine thought absently of the coat that Mrs. Hall had ordered. She'd be needing it soon. Christine strolled around the backyard, noticing that the remnants of Sue's vegetable garden looked lonely and cold. Lonely and cold, the way Christine had begun to think of Spooner. The thought of leaving Baxter made her want to cry. <clears throat> Not Baxter, Christine told herself, but the people. How could she leave these people? The thought hurt. But if she were honest, it would be easier to go than stay and see Luke and Caroline get married. Christine was shocked at the anguish it caused her to think of this prospect. You've done it now, Christine Bennett. Christine's voice broke quietly through the cold air to her ears alone. You've fallen in love with a man who is interested in another woman. You're going to be hurt, and it's no one else's fault but your own. Wanting nothing more than to sit down, feel sorry for herself, and have a good cry, Christine knew she had to get her mind off Luke and Caroline. Grandma M. had once said that God is bigger than any hurt we might have. Christine prayed as she went around the house to play with the kids. Please, Lord, be bigger than this hurt that threatens to overwhelm me. Help me to trust you for my future and accept your will for my life. <laughs>